Hello everyone, this is a continuation of the video on the 12 hour clock system and clock arithmetic. So in this video we will look at the properties of two 12 hour clock systems, um, check if the properties hold true, and then look at a very fast way to, to even, actually an even faster way to do um, clock addition and multiplication. Okay, so we actually have two systems that we could talk about for clocks. The first one is the set of uh, numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 up through 12 with addition, and then the second system would be with multiplication. So we want to check these properties for, uh, for those two systems. All right, here are your operation tables. Um, here's one for addition. Okay, all of this has been done already. It's you know time consuming to fill this out. Uh, you have 144 different addition facts here, okay? All right, so we'll check these properties and then um, determine whether this is a group or an abelian group, or neither. All right, so first of all, closure. All right, look through the, um, all of the different answers that you're getting, okay, and see if you are only getting answers 1 through 12, just integers 1 through 12. And we are, okay, so this is a closed system. All right, um, all right, remember some of those other properties? Okay, let's check commutative. Okay, commutative. All right, so find the main diagonal here. I'll be kind of careful about this one, okay? And then look on either side and see if it is symmetric. Can you reflect it across that diagonal and, and get the same um, answers on either side? And this one's nice because all of these diagonals running the other direction, threes, fours, fives, six, seven, eight, okay? And you can see that they all, you know, they all match. All of these numbers are, the answers are fours, all of these are fives. All right, so if you go through, this is symmetric, okay? So this is a commutative system. Um, you could check one or two if you're having trouble seeing it. All right, for instance, 12 plus five is three. I'm sorry, 10 plus 5 is 3. All right, and then check 5 plus 10. Here's 5, and 10 is also 3. Okay, so that is a commutative system. All right, associative. We definitely don't want to prove this. Much too time consuming. Okay, but we'll take a look at a couple examples. Okay, so let's look at, um, you know, you can pick your favorite one to try this out. All right, here's one I'll do. How about 3 plus 4 plus 8? Okay, so 4 plus 8, 4 plus 8 is 12. And then 12, or 3 plus 12, 3 plus 12 is 3. Okay, and then try 3 plus 4 first, plus 8. 3 plus 4 is 7. And then 7 plus 8, 7 followed over to 8, okay, is also 3. All right, so from this example, it does seem associative, and it is. It is an associative system. Okay, do you remember the other properties? We have identity and inverse. Okay, so let's check identity. All right, look for a column that matches this one. And if you go all the way to the end, there it is. All right, and then a row that matches this. There it is. Okay, so 12 is functioning as the identity. And that makes sense in a real life context as well, okay, if you add 12 hours to any time on the clock, it doesn't change the time that's displayed on the clock. Okay, and then inverse. All right, so we would need to check every row and column looking for 12s. Okay, and here we go. Okay, there you are. All right, so every row and column has a 12, so that means every one of these times has an inverse. There's something that can be added to it to equal 12 o'clock. All right, so yes, the inverse property holds. 
um, specific examples that we could ask. You know, what is the inverse of 9? Well, the inverse of 9 would be whatever you add to 9 to get 12, and that's a 3. Okay, so the inverse of 9 is 3. Uh, what's the inverse of 4? Well, what do we add to 4 to get 12? Okay, there's 12. You add 8 to 4 to get 12. All right. Okay, so then based on these properties, okay, do you remember the definition of a group? Is this a group? All right, well, yes, yes it is. Okay, group means that it has closure, associative, identity, and inverse properties. Okay, all of those are true, so it is a group. Is it abelian? Yes, it is. It's commutative. Okay, so this is an abelian group. Okay, and then let's try the same thing for clock multiplication. All right, I'll go through this one a little bit more quickly, um, and you can ask questions uh, later if you need help with this. Okay, so closure, look through your table here. Yep, okay, this is closed. All of the answers are uh, between 1 and, and these are you know numbers in that set, integers 1 through 12. All right, um, commutative. Commutative, okay. Here's the diagonal. All right, look on either side. We've got twos matching threes, four sixes, five eight eight five. Okay, scan a couple other rows. You really should check all of them. Okay, so I'll leave you to do that. Check maybe this long one here. All right, and just go through and look through all of these. And yes, this is also commutative. Okay, closed commutative identity. All right, so we need rows and columns that match. All right, here's a column. And here's a row. Okay, follow those back. One is the identity. All right, so sometimes it does, you know, it is a normal one or a zero, but sometimes it's something else. Okay, so it doesn't mean that it has to be a one, but in this case it is. Okay, so yes, the identity is one. Inverses. Okay, does every number have another time that can be multiplied by it to equal one. All right, well, let's go through and look for ones in each column. Uh, let's see, there's none here, none in this column, none in this column. Here's a one, none in this column. Here's one, not here, not here, not here. Here's a one, and then no ones. Okay, so no, um, this does not have the inverse property for this system, even though some numbers do have inverses. Okay, so, you know, seven has an inverse because seven times seven is one, but that does not mean that the system overall has the inverse property. Now, really, we could stop here, right? We don't need to check the associative property to make this decision. Um, is this a group? No, because the inverse property does not hold for every number. And is it an abelian group? Well, if it's not even a group, it can't be an abelian group. So even though it's commutative, it's not a group, so that means that it's not an abelian group. Okay, Okay. and finally let's conclude with some, um, some tricks for doing fast conversion in this 12-hour clock system. So here are some different things that you can do. Um, when you're working with different arithmetic problems, you are allowed to add 12 to or subtract 12 from any number. And that's because 12 is the identity. It's not going to change the time just to add or subtract 12 from it. Okay, now this only works in the 12-hour the clock system. Okay, and in, in different systems, we'd have different things. Just like in real numbers, it's zero that you're allowed to add or subtract from any number without changing it. Okay. Um, we can also divide any number by 12 and replace it with the remainder. So we looked at doing that on a calculator. This is the, just the same thing as subtracting as many 12s as possible, so that's okay. And then what you want to do is just make sure that your final answer is always uh, one of these elements in this set. 
Okay, so you can really have fun with this. Um, for example, 10 times 6 plus 9. All right, so let me show you a couple ways to do this. One would be, you know, start out and, until you, you know, get something that's not in the system. Okay, so 10 times 6 plus 9, well, 6 plus 9 is 15. I can subtract 12 from that and make it 3. Okay, now I could multiply and get 30, but I could also subtract 12 from 10 and get negative 2. Okay, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. And then I can add 12 to that and get 6. Right? So it looks a little weird. Normally we have a better way of labeling this to show that this is in, in the clock system. We use um, kind of this mod, mod 12 label. And that just tells you, uh, you know, that we're adding up to 12, and then past that we look at remainders of, of when you divide by 12. Okay, but we're not going to use that because we didn't really talk about that notation. Um, so for now, it's okay to have, you know, equations that really look false right here, that, that negative 6 equals 6, and okay, that's a little bit weird. All right, so think about, you know, compare that to the, the previous answers. We did this one earlier, right, so you can go back and look at your work there and kind of convince yourself that, um, that 6 plus 9 on a clock and then times 10, that that actually will land you at 6 o'clock. Okay, 8 times 3 times 5. All right, so one thing I could do, I could, uh, let's see, subtract 12 from 8 and get negative 4. All right, then negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. I can add 12 to negative 12 and get 0. All right, that's 0. And then I want to convert to a number in the clock system, so I can add 12 again. Okay, 0 is the same as 12. We said that 0 corresponds to 12 in this system. All right, now these are just a couple ways to do this. You could, you know, certainly do these other ways. Um, let's do one more for the, that 8 times 3 problem. Okay, so 8 times 3 is 24 times 5. Okay, 24, I could subtract uh, 12 and make that 12. 12 times 5 is 60. And I could divide 60 by 12 and replace it with the remainder. Well, there is no remainder when I divide it by 12, so that's 0. And then that corresponds to 12 in this system. All right, so there are your... your um, two options, okay, adding and subtracting 12s, dividing and replacing with the remainder. Okay, um, that is it for this section, and thank you for watching.